Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today we're taking a look at the top new games which are all releasing in April of 2024 and is shaping up to be a pretty decent month. As always, I will cover the obvious and not so obvious games that you might not even know are releasing this month, but hopefully it will give you a couple of new ones to add to your wishlist. Now drop a comment below telling me what you are currently playing or any games you're hyped to play over the coming weeks. Ok, so probably one of the most anticipated games for April is Stellar Blade. This has had a lot of hype over the last few weeks for one reason or another, so it's great to see that it's nearly here. It's an upcoming action-adventure game from Shift Up, but published by PlayStation, set in this stunning sci-fi world. You get to play as the protagonist Eve, where you're sent back to Earth on a mission to reclaim the planet. It's been invaded by the enemies, which you need to use your weapons and various combat skills to take down the bosses along the way. Now we've seen enough early gameplay and of course some from those leaked demos that should give us a good idea on just how good this game plays, but the overall gameplay and tight combat definitely stands out, especially with how fast paced it looks. And the thing is, there's not just one thing that makes this game look like a great game, it's kind of everything. The design, music, combat and atmosphere, all of it just looks and sounds incredible. Of course, it could also just be the character design and the physics that swing your vote. Oh, and if you wanted to get hands on with the game before it launches on April the 26th, there is a demo out now on the PS5. And don't forget, any progress you make during the demo will be carried over to the full game as well. Then we have Sandland, an action RPG based on the manga series which was written and illustrated by the late Akira Tariyama. You play as Beezlebub alongside your group of misfits as you journey across the desert to locate a legendary spring, all while fighting various enemies, unlocking new skills and enhancing your combat abilities. If you've watched the series, you will be familiar with this already, but otherwise it's giving me Mad Max meets Waterworld vibes, but with this awesome art style. Now it does appear the focus of the game is to use a variety of vehicles including hovercrafts, tanks and motorbikes, which can all be customised and upgraded with new engine parts and weapons, and you will need to upgrade them for the battles that you come across, although there are plenty of battles that can be completed by hand. I think from the early artwork and gameplay that we saw, it was implied it was a vehicle battle game, but there is a lot more to it than that. So Sandland launches on April the 26th and that's coming to the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series and PC. There's also a demo out now if you wanted to give it a go first. Oh and while we're talking about what Akira Toriyama created, the physical editions for Dragon Ball Fighters launches on April the 19th. This did originally launch back in 2018, but it has now been enhanced for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series. Ok, so Tales of Kanzira Zhao is a new single player action adventure game that is shaping up to look pretty good. You play as Zhao on a journey to capture the spirits of three monsters in order to revive his father. It looks vibrant, fast paced and to be honest, absolutely stunning. You can double jump, wall jump and dash through the air and use your two weapons on various enemies. You get a sun mask which allows you to deal damage up close and the Moon Mask which allows you to deal damage from afar. And from the gameplay that we've seen so far, this looks really fast paced and one I would like to play. I mean, we've had a couple of side-scrolling games lately, including Prince of Persia, so it's great to see more and more games coming out like this, but each with their own unique approach as well. Now, if you've seen the trailer already, you might have noticed that the voice actor sounds very familiar, and that's because it's the same actor from Assassin's Creed Origins. And not only that, but he is the guy behind the studio, and this is his first game to market. So Tales of Kanzira Zhao launches on April the 23rd, and that's coming to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PC, and Switch. Then we have Planet of Lana, which is a side-scrolling adventure platformer puzzle game set to release in April. You play as Lana, a teenage girl with her cat, as you explore a fictional planet which has been invaded by alien machines. And this game honestly looks absolutely stunning. It's got a pretty unique 2D puzzle and platformer experience, but it's also paired with this vibrant art style as well. I've been watching and listening to gameplay and trailers over the last few weeks, and I honestly think this is a game that's really worth playing in April. So Planet of Lana originally launched last year on the Xbox, in fact, in fact, it's on Game Pass if you're already subscribed, but it's coming to PlayStation and the Switch on April 16th. And if you're looking for something to scratch that platformer game itch, we've got Freedom Planet 2 launching on April 4th. This is a fast-paced platformer game which on the face of it looks like it has some similarities to Sonic, but it is very much its own game. It's one of those games that once you've played through a few of the earlier levels, you quickly realise there's a lot more to this game than you first expect. The stage design, combat and visuals look incredible and it is incredibly fast-paced. And this is said to be one of the best platformer games that we've had in years, and for me it deserves far more attention than it's got so far. Now it did launch on the PC back in 2022, but it's finally coming to consoles, and that's launching on April the 4th on PlayStation, Xbox, and the Switch. 
Next up we have Europa, which looks like a great little game. This is a third person action adventure indie game originally set to release back in 2023, but was unfortunately delayed until April 24. You get to play as the last human alive exploring Europa, which is the moon of Jupiter. You can run, glide and fly across this huge open landscape, all while solving puzzles, exploring and upgrading your jetpack. And from the early gameplay that we've seen so far, it looks incredibly vibrant, smooth and a pretty peaceful game to play. It's given me huge journey vibes mixed with the Breath of the Wild art style. I think this will definitely be one of the most chill games to play this year, and it's coming first to the PC on April the 16th. It has also been confirmed it will be coming to consoles, but we've not seen a date for this yet. And then on April the 9th, we get a new game called Children of the Sun, and this looks like no other game that I've seen before. Think Sniper Elite, but you play as the bullet? Essentially, you play as a woman with a long-range rifle, with the sole purpose of aiming and taking down your enemies. That sounds pretty standard so far, doesn't it? But what makes this different is as soon as you take that first shot, you literally become the bullet, flying through the air and hitting your targets. Then once you've hit your first target, you need to re-aim with the same bullet from the same spot and take another shot. Oh, and the catch is you only have one bullet, so you need to be able to line up and hit every single target without missing. And this looks like a real fun puzzle-like shooter game, and it launches on April the 9th on PC. On April 16th, Grounded is finally coming to PlayStation. This is a survival actual adventure game where you've been shrunk down to the size of an ant, and you'll need to explore and survive the backyard all while trying to find your way back to normality. Think Honey I Shrunk the Kids meets A Bug's Life. As you would expect, the world is filled with huge insects including bees and spiders, and is littered with cool items and pieces of tech that you can use and interact with. And what's great is you can either play this in first person or third person depending on your preferred playstyle, and you can play it either solo or multiplayer with up to three other mates. And if you're on Xbox, you might have played this in 2020 during the early access before it released in 2022, but it is now coming to the PlayStation and the Switch on April the 16th. So by now, you've probably heard of the incredibly popular game Sea of Thieves, which we've had on Xbox and PC for a number of years. Well, it's coming to PlayStation on April 30th. In this adventure pirate game, you sail the seas, exploring the open world, searching for lost ships and bearer treasure, all while avoiding or seeking combat from other online users. And that's what this is. It's a massive online pirate adventure game where to get the most out of it, you'll want to team up with a few mates. Of course, you can go at it solo and sail a smaller ship, but it's going to be far easier and a lot more fun if you go to battle with a crew. It's also great to see that it will include some PS5 features at launch, including haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. And not only that, but it will support cross-play, allowing you to play with your mates on PC and Xbox as well. So if you're yet to play Sea of Thieves, well, this launches on April 30th on the PlayStation 5. And if you like your action RPGs, you'll be pleased to hear that we're getting No Rest for the Wicked on April 18th. This is a top-down fantasy ARPG where you play as a holy warrior as you travel across the land, fighting enemies and collecting weapons. There's also loads of armor and gear that you can collect as well. And don't let the incredibly stunning visuals lead you to believe this will be an easy game, as it's been heavily compared to Dark Souls, where it will be both challenging and rewarding as you play. Now, at the time of uploading this, we have an April the 18th set as the release date for PC, but on both Xbox and PlayStation, there doesn't yet appear to be a date. Whether that means it's going to launch on the same day or later, I'm not too sure, so it's probably worth keeping an eye on the main websites closer to launch date. Okay, so if you've ever played The Sims and you found yourself spending more time in the build mode than anything else, you might like the idea of House Flipper too. You get to buy, repair and sell houses for a profit, as well as build new houses from the ground up. Think of it like a property development simulator, but it's not just the building side of things, you can decorate and furnish it as well. Now this might look familiar and that's because it did launch back in December on PC, but it is finally coming to consoles on April 10th, and that's coming to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series. Okay, so we've had plenty of survival games released over the years, but nothing quite like this one. Pacific Drive allows you to navigate your way through a surreal and anomaly-filled world, either on foot or in your trusty wagon. You need to scavenge, survive the night, and maintain and upgrade your car from the garage. For me, this adds a whole new take on the typical survival game, as you need to keep returning and upgrading your car as you go. Now, I've had a look through some of the gameplay that's out there already, and it is incredible just how much you can customise this car. Now, this did launch back in February, but if you decided to hold out for the physical edition, well, this drops on April the 9th on the PlayStation 5. Okay, so another big game launching in April that looks really good is Manor Lords. This is a real-time strategy game which combines organic medieval city building with real-time battles. Now, the entire map is split into several regions which you can explore, conquer, mine and farm, all with the purpose of expanding and building your city. You can build roads, wells, rivers, houses and entire settlements. Now, the entire infrastructure and available options in this game is incredible. 
but it's the detail that's completely blown me away. Going from a fully zoomed out map and then being able to zoom all the way in to the point that you can see blades of grass is just ridiculous. But it's not just the city building side of the game that will keep you busy, as it's also got a combat element to tackle as well. And as this is set in medieval Europe, you'll need to deal with threats and ensure you've trained the troops ready for battle. And on top of controlling and planning the city, you can walk around it in third person too, which is pretty cool. So Mana Lords launches on PC on April 26th, and it's coming straight to PC Game Pass. It will also be available later on Xbox, but we don't yet have a date for this. Now this is a new series I'm excited to watch, and that's Fallout, which is coming to Amazon Prime on April 11th. Well, just in time for that, they've decided to launch a bundle of seven Fallout games in one pack. It's called the Fallout Special Anthology, and it includes Fallout 1 and 2, Fallout Tactics, Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition, New Vegas Ultimate Edition, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76. And as this is a physical launch, they also come packaged with this mini nuke and collectible cards. And do you know what? I don't think I've actually played all of the Fallout games, but this could be a good time to start. Unfortunately, it looks like it's only coming to PC though, as there's no mention for a console release. And we've got a few bonus games that I think are worth keeping an eye out in April. Now we don't have an exact date for Dave the Diver, but it's supposedly coming to the PlayStation 5 in April. Of course, that could change at any moment, but the PlayStation website still hasn't been updated. And if you fancy a horror PSVR 2 game, we've got Happy Funland dropping on April 26th. This is a comedic VR horror set in an abandoned theme park. You'll be able to explore, enjoy the rides, complete puzzles, and defend yourself against the enemy robots. And if you picked up and played Final Fantasy 16 last year, you'll be pleased to know there will be a new DLC dropping on April 18th. The Rising Tide DLC slots in just before the ending of the main game. It comes with additional side stories and new locations. There's also going to be new abilities and a raised level cap for all three modes. So there you have it, a quick rundown of some of the top games we're getting in April. For me, Stellar Blade and Sandland stand out the most. So it was a real pain that they both launch on the same day. So that'll be interesting. But what about you? Is there anything that you're really hyped to play over the coming weeks or anything that I've missed? Now drop a nice new games in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my living room tour video next, as that covers everything I've added to it over the last year. Well thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and follow me everywhere. Until next time.